we're going to talk about chokes a little bit. In my solid state conversion of two radios, I use chokes and they are necessary. I'm going to explain why. This is a schematic diagram of a BC454 receiver. This uh, it's a tube unit, but notice something about the tubes. This plate is directly connected to a transformer. This plate directly connected to a transformer. This plate to a transformer. This plate to a transformer. This plate to a transformer. And this plate to a transformer. Why? Because the plate is high impedance and the coil is high impedance. But if I transistorize, if I pull out this tube and put a transistor in its place, the drain, which would be like the plate, is low impedance. This is high impedance. It does not like that at all. So I'm going to show you the schematic diagram of the solid state version. Here's the solid state version of the same receiver. The drain of this transistor is fed through a choke, 2.5 millihenry. Currently I'm using 2.7 millihenry, but either one works. The coupling is done through a 7 picofarad capacitor, and there's the coil. Again, choke, capacitor, choke, capacitor, coil choke capacitor coil choke capacitor coil why is it done this way well the drain is very low impedance it'll drag everything down with it I have to feed it with some RF here on this on the uh, gate and uh, your amplified uh, version comes out on the drain so this is its power source, a, a 2200 ohm resistor, a 2.5 millihenry choke coupled with a 7 picofarad capacitor to a, an existing IF coil. All the core IF coils are existing. So what happens? The strain is low impedance, the coil is high impedance, is coupled by a 7 picofarad capacitor or some other low value so it doesn't care uh, this cannot drag to ground and uh, this stays high impedance so you got high impedance low impedance and it works voila this is the whole secret to solid stating a tube radio among other things you know there are the considerations that have to be uh, considered but that is the big thing that's the reason people prior to this have not been able to do it. They tried some very complicated circuitry and they had very mediocre results. This works perfectly. Alright, let's go back to the coils. These are uh, J.W. Miller coils, chokes. Uh, this one is uh, 2.1 millihenry. This is 2.7 millihenry. This is uh, 8.2 millihenry. This is overkill I would only use that for a special purpose so let's set that aside this is the one I typically use right here this is what you want to aim for so let's take that one out so this is a 2.7 millihenry which is ideal if you want to wind that choke on ferrite these are wound on ferrite uh, the problem with uh, sending these out I charge a dollar a piece for them which is exactly what I pay for them uh, when I bought them, so I don't make a profit. But I did send uh, some of these to Germany recently, and uh, I had to do a customs declaration. I could have sent my manual just by itself for $6 postage, but because I had the chokes in, uh, included in the shipment, I had to do a customs declaration. By the time it got to Germany and they charged extra at customs and extra for delivery, 
the guy spent about forty dollars and uh, that was just way too much so in the United States I can sell you these uh, chokes for a dollar um, to Germany or some other country you may pay a whole lot more it's just not doesn't seem to be worth it but you can wind your own chokes and I'm going to show you how this is a uh, this is a piece of ferrite and if you look at it on the end it is hollow there's a hole in it okay so what you can do you can uh, take some JB Weld yeah, I'll show you that this is JB Weld the world's strongest cold well it says this is the uh, gray colored steel reinforced epoxy and it will adhere uh, to metal um, like crazy <laughs> you have to grind this stuff off so if I put a little bit of JB weld on this wire and insert it and a little bit on this side and insert it and then leave a little separation so they don't touch you'll wind up with this this has been glued in place you see the end of it um, that works out real good then you can wind on top of that here's one that uh, was wound I don't remember the value of this one but uh, the turns are far less than if you wind it without the ferrite now here's another ferrite that you can purchase usually on eBay or somewhere else this has the wire all the way through you cannot pull the wire out you're stuck with it but you can clip off one end you can take some of that JB weld and you can lay the wire on the side of it and they will not be touching and uh, when that dries you can uh, you can wind your coil on it uh, what is this okay I'll show you that later my favorite way is to wind them without the ferrite this is a 1 meg 2 watt resistor you can wind right on top of it you'll get the same results as if you wound on ferrite uh, these two were wound on resistors there's one you can see the winding this one has some uh, hot melt on it just to protect it this has hot melt if you wind 1100 turns on that 1 meg 2 watt resistor you will get approximately 2.5 millihenry or more um, my LCR meter reads it at 2.5 but I believe it reads low uh, I believe it's more I believe it's closer to 2.7 anywhere from uh, 2.1 to 2.7 millihenry will will work but the 2.7 millihenry is better so there you have a way that you can make your own chokes and uh, how to wind them? Well, that's another problem. I'll cut the video and we'll go show you that. Oh, and here's a little trick, by the way. If you uh, use the epoxy on the side, you want to hold the wire in place, just use a clip. The clip will hold it in place until that epoxy dries. And uh, then everything will work out okay. So that's about a medium sized alligator clip. There are all kind of winding machines out there for sale. This particular one is overkill. It is programmable. You can make it wind all kind of things. Uh, it was overkill for me. All I'm using it for now is just the winding feature and it will count the coils, uh, the turns, I'm sorry. So, how did it work? Well, like this. Got some uh, Allen screws to hold it down to the shaft. I purchased this uh, chuck separately. It's a very small one. And I can stick the wire of the choke in here while I'm winding it. We'll show you that. Now, some of you may have some fancy winding machines. 
you can buy these on eBay maybe make your own there's some plans on uh, online so you can make your own uh, my setup is kind of makeshift I got uh, a piece uh, clamped in my vise uh, I've got my wire so that will rotate freely and while it's winding I hold the wire like so and go back and forth with it as it winds around back and forth well where's the wire this is number 40 wire by the way this is on one of the ferrites so I just go back and forth as it winds you don't want to wind too fast you'll break your wire if you do so my machine counts the turns for me you'll have to figure out how to do that with your type winding machine now it will make a beautiful pattern if I use the rest of this machine which is capable of doing but for these uh, low-level experiments uh, I just did it this way so that's my stupid setup right here your setup should be better than that <laughs> all right well that's my story you can wind your own chokes that's the way to do it and if you do a solid state project and uh, you're not in the United States I'll send you this uh, instruction right here and it'll tell you how many turns on the ferrite it's about uh, 400 turns maybe 450 of number 40 it shows you how to shows you how to uh, weld the uh, uh, extra wire to the to the ferrite there a little illustration to help you this is the one you're winding on a, a uh, 1 meg ohm resistor. That's about 1100 turns of number 40 enamel wire. So you get one of these little instruction sheets also. And that will keep us from having to uh, charge you so much money just to send the chokes. Alright guys, enjoy your project. Got any questions, let me know in the comments below. KV4JT. And I'll leave my uh, email address at the end of the video.